Namaste and welcome to another session of uh, insightful conversations at Aurobh Bharati. This is a forum where we speak to individuals working in areas of uh, activity who are trying to bring new expressions and give new forms to the eternal and timeless spirit of India. And uh, we have talked to, over the last several months, we have talked to writers, storytellers, artists, educators, and various other people working in different uh, areas of activity. And today we bring another domain of activity in which you know India excelled like many other areas in the past. And India has a unique uh, status there as well. In terms of physical education, in terms of the games and uh, the sports culture, the games culture that we've had in the past. So we've known that, you know, right from the time of Rig Veda, there are references to uh, the significance that was given to the idea of education of the body. Uh, and of course, invoking and praying for strength of the physical, um, right from Rig Veda to the Puranas and epics, Mahabharats and Ramayana, we see how strength and physical culture and physical training was valued. And alongside, there are all kinds of great games, Krida, that kind of came in the we came in uh, vogue, and lots of emphasis was given to exercises, Vyayam, and things like that. And all throughout India, different games and sporting traditions emerged. So recently, our guests today, Sangeeta Goswami ji and Amitabh Satyam ji, have penned a wonderful book, The Games India Plays. So we are delighted that Amitabh ji and Sangeeta ji have agreed to join us for this conversation and share with us a little bit about what motivated them to write this book, what they have learned in the process, and what that means for re sort of like, you know, rejuvenating the spirit of game and sportsmanship spirit and the idea of playing, the idea of Krida, the idea of physical uh, fitness, along with character building and everything else that comes from sports and games, uh, and bringing the idea of traditional games making them come alive again in the Indian collective psyche. So really welcome Amitabh ji and welcome Sangeeta ji for uh, this conversation. We look forward to hearing from you. And before we do that, let me request Ram, my colleague, my research and tutorial assistant at Renaissance to briefly introduce our guests and then we'll get into the conversation. A pleasure to introduce uh, Amitabh Satyam and Sangeeta Gosam. So, Amitabh Satyam is a sports enthusiast and has worked in gymnastics and athletics. A graduate of IIT Kanpur with an MBA from Fisher College of Business, USA. He has held leadership roles at uh, leading corporations. He grew up playing Indian games in his village. Has brought this experience to the book that uh, they have written, and uh, now he plays uh, squash and golf. And uh, Sangeeta Goswami is the founder of Sri Life Global Foundation with degrees in mathematics and education. She also has masters in psychology, and she is a researcher currently researching in uh, counseling psychology. And also the correlation of life success with sports. She is a coordinator at uh, experimental methodology schools that promote integral education. So it's a pleasure to have both of us today with uh, both of you today with us. And uh, I welcome you both again over to Belusi. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ram. Thank you, Ram. Uh, so Amitav. Ji and Sangeeta Ji, you bring a very wide and interesting range of experience. The first question right away is this. What was your inspiration or motivation to take up this subject for this book, The Games India Plays, 
were you sort of independently researching and then came together or how you decided to collaborate so if you can sort of just walk us through briefly with that that would be great sure sure actually uh, uh, we uh, the common uh, link between sangeeta and i on this topic is that we are both uh, uh, connected with our culture and our uh, society and uh, traditions and despite doing our jobs which are not really connected with our culture but we have we are both very deeply connected now in um, one of the conversations and since uh, ram introduced me and saying that i play golf and squash so sangeeta mentioned that you know you behave you 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 are a nationalist you always talk about indian values and culture and traditions but why do you play these western sports like golf etc which is supposedly the the uh, the higher end of westernized uh, sports and uh, i actually like playing these these games but uh, i didn't have a good answer and then obviously i um, i i i grew up playing many of the games uh, actually very few of the games i played are in the book uh, but we'll tell you later why some of the games were selected but uh, i remember having so much fun as a growing up as a child with zero exposure to anything western uh, in a village in india even today uh, but certainly 50 years ago when i was growing up we didn't have any exposure to the western world no electricity either etc so we played what people did 2000 years ago 3000 years ago the, the society in my village was more uh, closer to the society of thousands of years ago than it is of today and uh, i remember having so much fun i uh, it's like life was always very exciting because we played large number of these games and we didn't have this organized way of doing anything so therefore uh, we thought that we appear to be losing a very large part of our childhood uh, because of excessive focus on western games and deliberately ignoring indian games and uh, this is a uh, semi political cultural as well as this this is exactly how we both feel that you know it's been neglected and uh, imagine the fun we used to have and we are not having fun anymore and uh, therefore I, i said that how do we promote so we had several discussions on the topic before the idea of a book came along that you know how do we do this what do we do uh, how can we you know kashi is associated with children and uh, so she always thinks from the perspective of children as well and then uh, we we realize that you know a uh, uh, a book which is uh, not a will tell you later i guess because you may have a question on it but the structure of the book is designed for the user so uh, earlier also i told you it's not for reading it's for using because uh, when you're playing the games you just follow the steps and so that's when we decided that we'll create a book which is so different from existing books uh mainly because i bring in the process mindset of how to present information in a structure that is in like like meaningful so it moves step to step to step and if you look at the unique value of the book is just that so the idea came purely from our sense of a crisis that we have that we are losing everything of of indian and uh, every time you think of anything that is meaningful it becomes western references we wanted to bring back india into our our homes Sangeeta ji would you like to add something to this please yeah thank you thank you so uh, i know from uh, last two decades by uh, obviously the teaching of sri arvind and mother that india is the spiritual leader of the world and that should come out somehow and in the at in the process so uh, i wondered our childhood and this three's childhood are so so much different they are you know being individualistic uh, selfish and you know they they are not uh, socially uh, you know they they becoming inept to uh, 360 degree personality so uh, when when i uh, entered in the education field around two decades ago i read the, the book by the mother uh, the mother on education and then uh, i realized that there are so many uh, aspect of child development uh, you know physical vital mental psychic spiritual so i i got so impressed and i admired from then only when when whenever we go to teach or uh, to uh, to you know develop uh, the ideas in uh, child growth always i kept in mind that four five aspect you know not only physical not only mental so the first uh, first rule uh, the sri arvindo says that the first rule of teaching is nothing can be taught 
you know so whatever we do for them is just to provide them opportunities provide them the environment in which they can learn themselves the the soul uh, itself the child soul itself has to induce in that you know environment to grow to expand so uh, this time uh, you know you may see uh, this uh, primary school children they are enrolled in some kind of uh, you know instructed coaching for sports also classroom teaching is there the pressure and stress is there but for their play time also we torture them to to send them you know uh, that fixed environment and that one strict coach also will be there to instruct and to you know put them in stricter rules so they have lesser opportunities to innovate to to you know make them creative so this idea came from then only i i i would like to tell you one incidents uh, in in navratris and diwali uh in navratri is in my society the small colony we we play garba but before that for five days ago we make uh, you know mount kailash and mount this vishnu devi uh, then with mud and sand children made so uh, one time i heard a child saying uh, his mother that uh, mommy i won't go to that cricket coaching today so why why uh, please please uh, let me take a break from that i want to make this you know gabbar and ambaji mata temple and they made it so beautifully like they use some sands and some water fountain and some roads they made with uh, small gravels and stones and so uh, there are some 12 children you know 12 children they gather from from evening like 5 to 6 they came in the ground and they plan how to build what steps should be there where the murti will be uh, located where the roads will go to the mother mother amba ji or parvati ji like that so they have they have created lots of and every day they will create a new new uh, new that statue for nine days for nine mothers like that so you think now how or unke paas aisa kuch hai nahi like they have no equipments no funds also they will bring some glass uh, glass pieces some tiles some gravels and some you know ribbons and colorful patches and they arrange so beautifully you cannot imagine so in this process they learn to you know collaborate they learn to arrange things as available on that time 5 6 o'clock क्या अवेलेबल है वो लाके वो अरेंज करते हैं राइट सो इन दिस प्रोसेस दे लर्न टू फॉलो द लीडर्स ओ वी हैवन दिस ग्लास स्टोन वॉट विल यू डू ओ वेट वेट टिल दैट देवम कम ही विल अरेंज ऑल ही इज द मास्टर ऑफ दैट यू नो ही इज द मास्टर ऑफ दिस थिंग्स दिस दिस फीलिंग्स कम्स वेन दे वर्क टूगेदर यू नो सो दिस दिस गेट ऑन इन माई हेड की वाई दिस चिल्ड्रेन आर नॉट इन ग्रुप्स नाउ आफ्टर कोरोना especially they have you know they have to stay at home and all so uh, i decided uh, i said to sir uh, this uh, golf uh, his dp was uh, with playing golf so i said uh, do you play golf and why not gilli danda <laughs> so, so so this was the arguments do you know gilli danda it is golf is the you know originated from this uh, gilli danda so he said yes it may be there but what can how can we proceed so i have no idea i just had a thought in mind ki the traditional games should be revived but how when where i have nothing i was blank so sir said uh, let uh, see uh, there are thousands and hundreds of ideas came and people mind c- comes and goes and there is no realization of that so i am so happy that i talked to him and he was the man to realize and we are here talking in front of you Uh, else this idea would you know stay like that this idea was very old like 5 6 years old so i am blessed uh, mother has sent someone to you know collaborate me, with me so this uh, this idea is uh, based on uh, inculcating you know physical mental uh, growth and you know making the children all uh, 360 degree personality to you know socially adapt and adjustment in the our society yes and having read some parts of your book i can totally see that you know you've taken the trouble to emphasize to highlight how each of the games that you have listed and we'll talk about that in a little bit 
uh, have certain benefits these kinds of benefits at all levels not just yeah. physical but also mental vital you know the yeah. emotional the relationship building working with the team and leading the team and following the orders of the leader Absolutely. and things like that all those values you highlighted them very nicely so i guess uh, sort of like just as a follow up to that uh, how did you decide like you will do some independent research and then collaborate or uh, you sort of like divided work among yourselves between yourself or i mean you have uh, i don't know what 16 17 games that you've yeah, mentioned 15, right? 15 major games we have detailed detail, detail, yeah. so you divided the task among between yourself <laughs> or right you right so you kind it, of were familiar with some of these games like you know for example the names that you have chosen to highlight even though you've given other regional names popular in other areas mm-hmm. so lagodi this is the name that i wasn't familiar with but pitu i know for sure yeah. you know yeah. going up in delhi uh, same way with the hopscotch nandi you've given the tamil name for it ram would probably be familiar with it but stapu that's the name that i the name that i you know uh, always knew so how like you looked into your childhood background and you know then you decided okay i will take the stapu or nondi or whatever and you take this because you were playing gilli danda so <laughs> you know this this curious sangeeta you want to take that or should Go yeah ahead. you should proceed yeah okay okay so the thing is that like uh, like we when we talked earlier we we were talking about this as a concept and then we said so it evolved rather than a uh, well designed project plan that i would normally do for a project uh, which happened afterwards but in the beginning it was very exploratory so let's find out what what we can actually put together because just like our indian traditional texts they are mostly not in existence very few exist and uh, uh, so ev- everything about our culture is word of mouth right it came is like a um, the next generation hears from the earlier generation and that's how we are keeping the culture the games are also like that we don't have an organized uh, publication of any kind that describes these games so that the villages each village like for example my village in bihar and her village in amdavad and or rajasthan they play different set of games some of them are common some of them are similar and with different names and some of them are so idea was to just 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 start exploring so i brought some stuff from my background from my childhood she brought some she has more exposure to this uh, and uh, she was able to also travel uh, from home to the neighborhood villages and the local schools that she is well connected with we collected some initial uh, list of things that people do and then uh, we went uh, on online search with typical uh, finding out any games and references that we may have and then we almost identified about 195 to 100 games that is said you know this is like a raw list of all the games that we have and let us see and we decided to not no more research for new games the other games that we we used at the initial set and then we applied our thoughts how do we pick the games so we picked three rules and those three rules were uh, they have to be group games not individual games there are many individual skills that you know we all learn but these had to be games which played with others and they have to be group games and the second there should be outside games not in inside so uh, it should be played outside and number 3 and which is very uh, unique that we i mean it it was one of the things that one would never think but each player should be engaged at all times uh, i i i bring this reference because i have been saying to my friends and uh, you know whenever there is an occasion in public also that cricket is the worst game because half the team is sitting watching the other and uh, the other half that is on the field only two or three are playing the others are also watching it, in case the ball comes their way they run to catch it otherwise they are again watching so the number of if you look at the number of man hours on the field to the m- number of active hours would be like how one is to 100 it's like you know even the batsman who is standing there is all mostly standing right and then when he or she hits it's like one instance and then the boom it's gone and then again you are standing and sitting and things like that uh so the point is we don't want that so this in my mind uh i shouldn't say hatred but i feel offended that if we have such an amazing set of games and we end up playing cricket and the cricket is exploding we yesterday 44000 crores was given 
to to buy the rights to uh, IPL. So you can imagine the level of which this has gone into our culture. And and then uh, this from large cities to small uh, towns now to villages, they everybody's playing cricket. And I always felt you know that's such a bad game to play. And so I I made sure that the games we choose are very unlike cricket. That means everyone is active at all times. And uh, obviously, we don't play for five, six hours. This could be like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Kids come together, play. And uh, and then, and of course, uh, uh, many games are very well known. Five, five of those 15, everybody would have heard of. We didn't want to exclude games that are popular just because they are popular, like Kabaddi and Coco and, and such, such, such. I mean, a few more, like Gilly Danda and such. We didn't want to exclude them. But the remaining games are also... Uh, uh, even even the games that we believe are popular today, other than uh, Kabaddi, others are also not popular. Kho Kho, I guess, but very few of them are actually being played. I have not seen anybody play Kabaddi anywhere. Mumbai, I mean, Bangalore for 18 years, in any other city, nobody has have seen, nobody, uh, have never seen anybody play Kabaddi. So that means if the name is known, most people are just watching on TV and now not playing. So the point is that this is this is exactly how we con converged from 100 to a much smaller number by eliminating. We eliminated a large number of them mainly because we didn't have enough information on them to write a full story. So in the, 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 the list that you have that you see, a large number of rules and the steps have been created by us to make sure it's a complete game. A lot of times we don't realize when you are visualizing the game and each step, which what what player is doing at a particular step. We had to envision and say what what are the possibilities. We didn't have to lose leave any gaps. So if a person is playing, they don't know. Oh, wait a second, what do I do now? So uh, we didn't want to lose that. So we had this whole organized approach to uh, like a process flow, like we do in engineering. Ram might be probably relates to that. That you know each and every step, what happens next. What does this player do? What does this player do? Each player has a next step. And you ensure that each next step is very well defined. So the, so we eliminated and we brought it down to almost 20. And then we said 20 becomes too many. Let's just do with 15. In fact, even 10 would have been good. Because the idea is to popularize. And a smaller number is easier to work with than you know have a grand list or encyclopedia of 2,000 games that it would be hard for anyone to follow. So basically, the, the research was very exploratory, very organic in the beginning. And then we use our filters and our approach to bring it down to a reasonable number, which we believed was uh, complete in every aspect. Sangeeta, would you like to add something? Uh, yeah, the, as Sir said, uh, I would say it was more uh, difficult for Amitabhji to, you know, this research idea because uh, every day I, I would find some new game and uh, come with lots of detail, you know, information from Mahabharata and Vedic and Sindhu, Sindhu Saraswati civilization and all. And I have so much information. Now I have gathered all the, you know, I, I would go to some neighborhood uh, uh, village and, you know, try all the variations like some gave have 15, 20 variations. Now you, you, you have said this uh, Stapu. Uh, Stapu has uh, 20 patterns on which you can you know step on. Now I was so I, I I always been so excited. I have 20 variations. We should include all of them and like that you know. <laughs> so he has some you know he has some liter parts. He he would say no 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 we, we are not taking all these variations. Uh, people would get confused and all. So I, I would feel somewhat disappointed, but afterwards, uh, as the work proceed, proceeded, I, I learned that this, uh, this structure and uh, some basic, you know, rules uh, that uh, three rules he has mentioned, it's very necessary to, for users also, you know, how, how to pick one variation and uh, proceed on that time on the ground. He may not, uh, the teachers may not, may not have the time to, you know, go through all the variation and then pick one selected term or one selected variation to, you know, play out. So his decision was excellent and uh, some, like uh, some games were my favorite as childhood. Uh, in this book, uh, we have 15 games. I think we have lost Sangeeta's. Yeah, I think so. Oh. Okay. Amitabh ji, do uh, you have... Sorry. Two, 
Yeah. Sangeeta, to, to, we, for, for some time we had lost you, so you have to repeat it. Oh, okay. So, uh, my childhood favorites were, was uh, individual games also, like, you know, marble, marble games and that hoop rolling games. We can roll uh, tire, or torn tires or old, uh, that iron ring with a stick and racing with all other friends. So we have to exclude those individualistic and uh, skill, skill, sir, personal skill, hota tha, wo humko exclude karna pada. So that was a grudge. I, I will work on uh, another book uh, that individual and indoor games and all that. But this book is, you know, completely outdoor team based group dynamics games. So I am happier now because uh, we, I, I agreed to him and uh, we go this way. So. Yeah, research is very interesting because uh, I have to travel to villages and some of the games. They uh, we 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 didn't know those games in uh, my city, but in uh, villages like hundred kilometers far away, they they play daily those games. They play daily and in their routine. So I was so surprised. Uh, so so much indi uh, indigenous games are you no know, even we are not aware of the title also. You know. This Kili Thatu in Tamil Nadu, this, uh, uh, oh, uh, one interesting incident, I would say. Um, when in my research, I uh, I used to call my friends in other states like Tamil Nadu and Chennai for asking about traditional game in their region. So one of my friends say, yeah, we play Kili Thatu game, uh, which nine tracks in it, and we have to cross and this and that. Then some uh, some other week I would call to Maharashtra and he said uh, we play Atya Patya and he, it has five trenches and we go. So I collected four uh, different drafts uh, based on their conversation and finally I got to know they, they four are all one game with different names. Kili Thatu and Atya Patya and Atya Patya and Sur. In Punjab they say Sur. So I, I I felt so silly that I worked on four different games in four different drafts and ultimately I have to conclude this is only one game for, uh, of other different names. So this was very interesting journey for me. I even talked to my Chinese friends. Uh, I got one draft on uh, Russian language in Russian language, which mentions our Indian traditional game in Russian language. In Japanese also, I got a book. They have mentioned traditional games of uh, some Indian only. Uh, went there and uh, you know drafted and compiled Indian traditional games. So my research was so interesting and I felt like some other another world, you know. It was very so, exciting. Uh, so yeah. uh, Bailey, you would have seen, I think you also also mentioned that we have about seven to ten names for yeah. each game. And the, the one in English on top is we consider as the most popular or most accepted name or if a game originated in Tamil Nadu, we put the Tamil name on top yeah, and yeah, other yeah. names underneath. Or if some, there are there are two games we have taken from uh, Andhra Pradesh region and Odisha. So they are the name, their local names are on the top. So uh, we chose deliberately to remove our personal backgrounds and respect the tradition that was brought out by a certain culture or certain uh, regions. So it's very uh, region uh, neutral, gender neutral, what else other everything neutral yeah, yeah. yes <clears throat> i think this is this is quite a marvelous thing that you have done in the book you have given the diversity i mean you kind of express portrayed the diversity of india and at the same time what unifies mm -hmm. so Please that's that's really come out very nicely uh, ram you had one question i think discussing uh -huh. earlier First of all, I'm like uh, I'm really uh, amused to see how we have uh, followed a proper research methodology because coming from a research background, I could see how we have had a proper structure in, in, in you know, collecting things and, and having some criteria like what to uh, bring it out and what to avoid to get there. So I'm just really happy to know that. Uh, Thank you. And, and you, were, you were mentioning uh, that. Uh, you know, golf, uh, the origin of golf is Kili Danda. Um, and, and somewhere else also, you uh, in some of the documentary, read, uh, you mentioned about the origin of another familiar theme. So, like, how did you uh, come to know about these kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, details of the history? So, the, most of the games, if you observe, 
especially western games which use equipment there is a some there is a bit sort of a stick and there is sort of an object that you hit so uh, i don't think we have claimed in the book that the golf came from gilli danda or people say cricket came from this is a more popular version is that the cricket came from gilli danda but uh, so we have never said any of that sort in, only in manipuri rugby we have said that the american football and the western rugby is actually uh, was born in manipur and we have given some evidence but otherwise we have not said anywhere it's not even our purpose to go into historical research and argue or give evidence etc so that generally any game as yes, like i say used with equipment is usually you hit something so tennis badminton squash badminton uh, table tennis uh, cricket uh, and golf we are playing different size and shape of the ball using a different type of a stick and gilli danda so we, all of them are very similar and i think it's naturally they are similar may not because they came from each other but how else do you play so if one or two people are playing then we are doing this our uh, group games have a different dynamics we don't necessarily need an object uh, that we we, we 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 could pass it on etc but then there are other configurations that you can create if you have a group but uh, in terms of origin it is very hard to say which came first all we know is that gilidanda has been around for 5000 years and golf was originated 250 years ago in scotland so in that sense but i don't think that uh, the golf originated because they knew about gilidanda and they changed the structure i don't think so uh this is the natural evolution of sports when you're hitting a ball earlier we were hitting a ball with some stick i'm sure it was even go the moment you can you can create a ball and i'm sure earlier they would make wood balls and they would be hitting with something and we can say that was the origin of cricket also but so at the point is that none of these games are so creative that they have to have a very long origin they are just hitting something with something and uh, I, so that's that's what i think but uh, sangeeta has done lots of research in origin of the of of many of these games and has yeah, some references uh, to mahabharata and others and we mentioned in the book also so in one of yeah uh, ram i i would read a, you know uh, one verse from mahabharat i i am saying that the um, uh, golf is uh, coming from gilli danda <laughs> because i have the i have the resource it the one verse from mahabharat say, uh, said Uh, it represented pandava and kauravas were playing with uh, this gilli danda gilli is vitti vitti uh, in maharashtra they also now also call that vitti dandu vitti dandu vitti is the smaller one stick and the uh, dandu is long so kridanto vitaya tatra viraha paryachar unmuda papat kupe sa vita tesham ve kridatam tada this is from mahabharat and we all know mahabharat is you know at least 5000 old this uh, scripture is so why not why not i should say this golf is coming from gilli danda right this uh, you can you can you know search for mahabharat verse on gilli danda i have such a lot and this one was uh, at the time i get this was i was you know i was uh, jumping with joy because you know gilli danda they say this is old game and you know simpler game and this and then why would sri krishna would play this game was it simpler and you know old fashion and this and that so i have some, we have i wanted to you know compile all the historical references for all the game but unfortunately i couldn't find for all of the game so uh, we have to follow the structure so we eliminated those you know uh, historical references from all the games but i have that uh, compilation of references yeah right, so right. whenever someone uh, you know object i can just <laughs> go and show them this is our you know this is we are the oldest civilization why would we not say this exactly. right so uh, then, even if uh, someone say baseball is not uh, from india or golf or rugby rugby uh, for rugby uh, some american uh, author uh, author and sportsman uh, emma levins emma levins has said that uh, manipur people are very right in saying that our games has been stolen and pattern like rugby so yeah. manipuri rugby which now called manipur rugby it has another original name it is played with coconut which is sounds which is the same shape as the rugby ball so uh, so round ball is naturally like round but then uh, to have a ball in that shape 
I I actually wondered about that till I discovered that there is a it comes connection with uh, there is a connection with a coconut which is similar shape and that you can actually hold in your hand and throw. And when you throw, there is a unique uh, trajectory it takes, which is not uh, the same as uh, any other ball because it it, it, needs, it follows a different. Uh, you cannot go around. You know, it needs needs to go in the same line. Anyway, so uh, like she was saying, we are the oldest culture. We don't even have to defend it. Uh, or uh, that you know we were things were born here. They were naturally born here. I mean, when till about thousand years or even five hundred years ago, people didn't even have anything anywhere else. Uh, so only India, China, most of Asia were the only ones who had anything going. The rest of the world didn't even exist. Uh, certainly not in the shape and uh, size it does today. So uh, while it's not a scope of this book, but we, if you study the evolution of the West and its prominence and uh, and then uh, colonization and imposition of their culture, I have mentioned in the book. Maybe I think maybe the last chapter also has that, but first chapter has more. That wherever the colonizers went they imposed their culture and traditions. Sports are one of them. So how do we, like I live in a very nice uh, building here in Bangalore apartment complex, and we have tennis courts, we have squash, we have badminton, we have, uh, uh, I don't know what, else, table tennis and all that. All of it is there. there. There's no evidence that this place can be just simply picked up and put in America and it will be like, I it's all the same thing. There's nothing that Americans needs to be told. Oh, this is Indian learn, learn. So, because we are so westernized in our approach, and and it's, and the, typically the English medium schools and then so-called the up good schools, are they they strive to to appear to be as westernized as possible. In fact, they go two steps higher. The American westernized. Suppose America is so westernized. I don't know what is the definition of westernized, but we go steps higher. So, if if in American schools they you speak Spanish or you speak Tamil. Uh, amongst yourself, it's perfectly fine. In India, if you speak anything but English, you are fine. So, so the thing is that we have overdone this, and uh, therefore, and this culture is pushed down from uh, very rich people who live in, uh, you know, who study in these schools, down to a uh, so-called lower economic class, and down to the villages. So, the shame of not knowing these games or not being good at sports. Uh, is, is pushed down. So people like to up, appear to upgrade themselves by playing Western games. In fact, one of the things that uh, Sangeeta keeps telling me that she likes is a, like a very old Facebook post of mine that, that said, Indians are bad at sports because sports are not Indian. And uh, I was analyzing it uh, at that time, this was five years old, that you know, we, how many the number of tennis courts in, or there are zero squash courts in Bihar. There may be five, six tennis courts in Bihar. So. You, and now if you expect a Bihar, which is a bigger than England, to compete with England, we would obviously lose. Similarly, all over, all over India also, if you look at the number of squash courts or badminton courts and uh, tennis courts, the only about a crore people, 10 million people have access to so-called Western sports. So the competition is between 250 or 300 million or 400 million now uh, of America versus 10 million of India when it comes to Western sports competitions. The rest of the people don't have access to those sports. So it is unfair comparison when we say that Indians are bad at sports because you know these sports are not even Indian. We, you go to villages, which is 70, 80% of the population. They don't have tennis courts. How do we expect India to be good at sports? But so what we have done, we have taken away the, the traditional games and not given alternatives. If, in, if India or even the British or the earlier, earlier governments wanted to upgrade us to become Western, Upgrade is also under courts, uh, and then and then they should do they should do that they should build all these courts they should remove uh, other cultural marks culture marks and then you know they should make it just like the they haven't done that simply they have just removed stuff and left us empty completely naked that we have nothing going on but our clothes are gone so I think by when we talk about reviving Indian sports it is it is akin to reviving our own claiming our own identity that this is fine to be Indian, it's fine to play Indian games. Yeah, I don't think if you go to a hi-fi school in Delhi or even in Bangalore and say that oh, okay, we play Kabaddi every evening, I don't think people ever do that and they would not even say it with pride. But if they play tennis or Kabaddi, they would actually, they would carry their tennis racket to school sometimes to show that they play tennis. So that is the culture. So it is a very much of a cultural oppression that has created this uh, you know, removal of uh, our own anything Indian, clothes, food habits, and sports, languages, of course. 
So it's, it's part of the same one grand room that we are erasing or cleaning uh, India with uh, Indian traditions. Yes, I, I think that that is one really important thing that you mentioned, Amitabhji. In that sense, your book really sort of continues and carries on and takes further the whole discourse on decolonizing the mind, mm -hmm. you know, the decolonization of the Indian mind and taking healthy pride in everything Indian, including the Indian traditional games. I just want to point out, uh, read something from your uh, chapter on Gili Danda, since you, we were talking about Gili Danda, just for the benefit of our viewers as well, so that they can also be enthusiastic about reading your, picking up your book. In that chapter, you say very clearly that Gili Danda has been popular for about more than 5,000 years. And you mentioned it is believed to have been spread by the Maurya Empire about 2,500 years ago to, to today's sin, Afghanistan, Nepal, Bangladesh, Cambodia, Italy, some parts of Turkey and Africa. This game is also said to be the precursor of American baseball and British cricket. So um, it's really significant to know these kinds of things. So how, in fact, when I was looking for some images um, for, you know, putting up some kind of to share with the designer to make a little graphic for your this video when we are ready to do this. I searched some images on Wiki Commons for um, which game? Hopscotch. And I, the first image that came up was about little girls in Cuba playing that hopscotch. Non -D. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. yes, the international appeal. And you also mentioned for some of the games, you know, um, I think it is for uh, Nandi or which game where you say now there is an international league right, for right. one of those games. Lagori. Uh, yeah. Lagori. I mean, I was surprised to see. I I grew up, uh, you know, seeing little boys in my neighborhood playing Pitu. That game never was attracted to me. But <laughs> I was surprised to read that there is now an international Pitu league. I said, yeah. wow, this more, is than, uh, I more than 13 people are there now connected. Yeah. Yeah, so it's really interesting how um, the Indian culture spread in this informal way throughout the world. I mean, games probably were also one of the vehicles to carry that spirit of Indian culture. Ram, did you have any follow-up? Sorry, I interrupted in between because I just was wanted to share this thing about Gili Danda. Do you have any follow-up to that? or? I just wanted to add. Uh, just one. Uh, I wanted to add to what you just said that these games were popularized in Afghanistan and Bangladesh and others. So these are recent divisions. These are recent political divisions based on religion and others. But when these games were becoming popular, uh, the political boundaries may have been uh, different even then. But the the cultural boundaries uh, extended all the way, all of Asia and uh, all the way to Iran and such were part of the same cultural boundary. Uh, and then uh, there's no uh, parallel boundary, no, no parallel culture that existed at that time. So it's naturally like, for example, when uh, kids in school are learning guitar and uh, playing uh, uh, California, California, that, that's a spread of culture. Same way, I'm sure other people were trying to copy us. So those who, who were part of our own ecosystem, they were naturally pursuing what we did or what one, you know, if something originated in Indonesia or today's Indonesia, I would never claim that it came to India from Indonesia. I said we are part of the same ecosystem. It didn't really travel by fighting and war and all that. They did. They just we were part of the same system. So I go to. In fact, if I go to Indonesia and uh, uh, which is uh, doesn't keep the same culture, religion, but uh, or Thailand, I feel very much at home. I feel so much at home. I have a couple of stories I can share another time. So though people are very close, I relate a lot more to those people than sometimes to people in Delhi. It's it's that much of a cultural similarity from uh, Bihar to Thailand and Indonesia than it is towards the West. So, so to the same thing, actually, same culture. No, very, very significant point, yes. So the soft power uh, has been in play for a very, very long time, yes. Um, so kind of just to follow up on this culture, with the connection of culture with sports. In your research, especially Sangeeta, since you spent a lot of time um, talking to people in various parts of the country, um, 
did you find some close linkages between cultural values and some of the games and i think particularly about uh, like you know how the games i mean the cricket for example cricket the laser you forget the one day test match much later talking of the old model of 5 6 days you know the leisureliness the tea breaks and you know the white uniforms and everything like cricket i grew up listening from my father it was always gentlemen's game you know there were huge parties going on around the cricket match and things like that american football very aggressive is there something in some of these games that you have mentioned in your book where you could find a very important linkage between some of the values that we emphasize so much in our culture anything in particular that jumped out at you yeah most most of the games you know our most of the traditional games have you know morals values cultures you know life lessons and life building character building you may not skip one point i i may say you know uh, this uh, i have one game uh, there are many but i i would like to give this example uh, this uh, just you have said that they have you know they have the tendency to steal and then pattern with other name that that is in my head for very long they have patented neem now neem neem herbs is you know oldest form of medicine in, in our country now they have patented all the uses of neem neem plant and neem you know trunk and all this so in game also they have patented this pachisi pachisi is uh, uh, like uh, shakuni and uh, they are playing in that you know uh, prior the major war so mm-hmm. Uh, this pachisi they have picked and patented as parchisi they have added just r and now that is the game of america now they have patented it and our children you know uh, buy with so much pride this is a western game and we are playing now pachisi we know my grandparents know and before many generations we are you know keep playing the, those games so uh, in, uh, this is indoor game like pachisi and ludo and uh, shatranj and chess whatever whatever you say they have origin in our india because i have searched uh, you know before this outdoor game plan came we have searched indoor games also so i have 50 board games in my list which are ori- originated in india now for outdoor games this uh, in europe they have they say royal game of kings and queens prisoners base you him you may have um, heard the dare base they say dare you you want so much courage and you know skill to play th- play that game because it has much higher strategies and techniques and you know extreme per- performance and all that now in my search i went to the that uh, you know my manipur friend said that uh, i have very old very ancient game in my list uh, if you would like i can show you in video he, he you know started video calling and show me some some few children in far village they were playing and that was they they called it gela chhat gela chhat is the king ran away and we have to rescue him like that and in ayodhya they say sita uddhar now sita uddhar is the game in europe they say royal game of britain the prisoners base now uh, it has uh, the, the, some russian sportsmen mentioned it some 1100 years old game royal base in a, you know major game of uh, kings and king princess and princes were used to play now we don't need princes and princesses to play that royal game we have been playing those games 2000 3000 you know manipur or uska bhi far village you may think kitna purana hai so sita udhar is a pre, uh, prisoners base hai apna then यू बी लकवी इज रग्वी है अपना देन लूडो इज अपना चौसर है देन सतरंज इज चेस है सो लिस्ट गोज ऑन सो आई फेल्ट सो यू नो सो मच प्राउड ऑफ माई यू नो माई ओरिजिन माई इंडिया दैट एवरी वन वॉन्ट्स टू स्टिल अवर इंडियाज एंड कॉपी दे no i think uh, uh, only one point uh, that uh, the games uh, also grow just like grass grows in a unique uh, situation unique uh, combination of uh, climate and sun and rain and all of that combined and the terrain so the games that are originated also have to have a, they, uh, games are also a cult- extension of that natural set of things that are uh, that are around you 
So the Gili Danda can be so the games that, that could be possibly be played uh, in in Europe, for example, is like you know like a, like you do skiing and others that may not exist here. But the rest of the games that uh, and then uh, to me like just like cultures grow, the religions grow. Religions, I don't mean these two, but in general, like the concept of life and all that, so we call it culture, uh, grows, uh, which is a, it's, it's a part of your, you know, the, the region. It's naturally evolves over time. So the games also evolve and the games evolve, then the nature of game also, what is existing during those times gets also incorporated in the games. So most of the Indian games that uh, I think your question was about, do they reflect, I think most of the Indian games reflect lots of strategy. And uh, uh, there's concept of game theory, so which obviously has the word game in it, so it has to have. So the game theory also talks about choices that you can make, where uh, you yourself win versus the team wins, and you sacrifice. And Sangeeta is very particular, and she says it that you lose in particular a game. You individually appear to be losing by doing badly, but then you allow uh, others to take a lead, and the overall team wins. So that choice that you make. It's like uh, in cricket, I get always, I don't know cricket well enough, so I, I'm, I don't want to offend anyone, but I always thought Sachin Tendulkar played for himself so that he would play very, very slow and get his century and leave very little time for others to catch up. I, I, this could be biased, I don't know, but I have seen it a few times. So that is where you are playing for yourself. I'm, I'm Sachin, I'm getting my centuries, I have 42 centuries versus, but the, the team lost, but the people don't have a memory of the team losing the century, become, but Sachin becomes God. So how do we fight that thing? That how do we become, we sacrifice our own personal gain to, for the team to win, for the country to win. So, so many of those values are inculcated through these games that are already embedded in that the, the, the whole framework of the game. So I think that is how our culture gets reflected, our overall time and the forces of nature at that time get reflected through our games. Yeah, exactly on that note, uh, this Vishamrut, we have the game Vishamrut, where we hmm. Okay, I think our signal Poor is connection. again gone. Back to no, back to the game. Hello, sorry. Hello. Thirty seconds. You are gone. Okay. So this game, Vishamrit, has the rule that we can revive our teammates by you know touching them, and he can get back into the game. So this this uh, this game teaches the values. You know, if someone some negative thing is happened, you can reverse it to the positivity. You know, so this this is a very exciting game. Um, but thing is that when you go to revive that person, you may get out of the uh, game. So you have the risk. To ruled out of the game. So uh, taking that risk also, you survive or you revive your, you know, teammates. And that is the joy, you know, you, you, you help someone, you, you help uh, your teammate. Now, which is the game that uh, teaches this nowadays? I have seen children play, playing for, you know, that event also, ki kabhi out hoga, to mera turn aega. This is <laughs> right? In cricket, 11 players are there. They have only one hour. Now, when will it, it, it get to batting for his turn? So, he pray, jaldi out ho jata achha hai. So, this is the change in, you know, they become individualistic. They become selfish. They become irritated, anxious by these uh, so-called modern, modern games. So, I see major difference in our tradition, our values, and in in this in this game process, they learn, you know, to collaborate, to help, to support, to lead, and uh, many of games have, you know, extreme per action. We don't have to wait for mind thought. Abhi aisa hoga, to main aisa karunga. No, you have to take decision on that time, that moment. So this is body consciousness, physical consciousness. You know, you know th that all. We don't need uh, every time. You know, mind and body and place and environment, and then we act. We act on extemper. Just say the spitu. When you hit the stake, and suddenly all gather and you know pile up, fat fat. You don't know at what moment the the stake will be. You know, um, scattered. So this is uh, many of these games have extemper action, and uh, you know. Uh, that physical, uh, you know, action, you know, um, that uh, without any instruction or pre-decided rules. Exactly. 
So that every the, time rule changes, every time the role of the player changes. Exactly. One time that is a hitter, another another moment he is piling up the that uh, stake. How how exciting this! You have to change your mindset every every moment. So so these games are no lesser than you know Western games like in strategies, in techniques, in moral building, character building, whatever you name it. Why should we, you know, why should we delete them from our life? There is no reason at all. so my my major mission mission as a educator and as a psychologist i would uh, you know i will pay major time of my life behind this project yeah those are some excellent examples really uh, i mean even the name vishamrit you know the connection it has with our uh, legend you know the amrit manthan and the whole idea of being reborn I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really I don't think that. Yeah. Oh, for each each game, I have so much detail, insightful thoughts that that we can go on for a whole day long. You know, each game has this minor, you know, minor uh, mind shifting trends. This Atya Patya and Kili Thattu Ram, you must be knowing in Tamil Nadu. They say Kili Thattu nine trenches, and you have to cross. And this game has the logic that. in our life we have all negative emotions like anger and fear and you know jealousy and this we have to cross and reach to go this is equal importance that you have to cross all the obstacles and reach to the uh, level of you know winning winning position in this game when a when a player wins crossing all the nine trenches it reaches to the score the winning score then he has to reverse that track come to reverse re crossing all the to help other teammate to reach that level now think uh, when the winner is uh, still staying in the game to help other teammates so this is the lesson when you are at the winning position you should not leave the game rather you help or support other teammates to reach that level and he still be in the game whole the time uh, like uh, all the players uh, would reach that level so this is how how interesting this is why would he stay if he he has gotten the century still he plays that to to help and it has strategy and techniques that uh, the bonus point goes to their teammates when the player is winner so where at this satya patya you must you know you must very complex very strategyful very hard rules but so much fun in this game so sangeeta you keep going to pondicherry next time you go you set up uh, will you will help you set up a game from the schools there yeah whichever game uh, <laughs> yeah, i will you know demonstrate i can demonstrate no, that I, i i think definitely in fact um, shobindo society Uh, there are a couple of projects going on where they are very much involved with the local schools so when mm. you come here let's sit down and talk about and plan out how to work with uh, those two workers that are very much involved with local schools yeah, taking sure. uh, all kinds of science and mathematics and other uh, education projects but why not bring up this idea of the traditional games yeah yeah for sure uh, we, we can definitely talk more about that but i think ram wanted to also discuss something about your uh psychology work and along with the game so ram do you want to go ahead with that first yeah so uh yeah psychology is major major concern for me because uh, the, where there is child development involved where teaching and learning the process and majorly the integral education i am focused on so uh, when uh, you see when the child gets to age 6 or 7 it uh, they want to explore they want to innovate and they prefer self learning instead of you know instructed teaching we should not you know impose our adult ideas on them you know do that do this do that for all these rule and they don't like it as child psychologists say they they want to innovate they do everything himself so this games uh, provide them that environment in nature to explore to find available resources like this pitu stake ke liye wo kuch bhi patthar khoj ke laate they have to find out stone of uh, same size and then stake for gilli danda they they would uh, pluck just a branch a tree branch and you know uh, mold it to in a 
uh, gili and danda so they have lots of opportunity to be within nature explore the surrounding and you know that way the the brain and the creativity and cognitive uh, development is major chances in our games because they are all outdoors they have to go outside find those players find the suitable grounds you know uh, sandy ground grassy field hai chhota area hai how to how to manage dhoop hai to find some trees you know they have they have lots of uh, this uh, chances of growth of mental faculties this that is why you know uh, in in cricket coaching what will you have a bounded area same timing same coach same rules and he knows boundary ke bahar gaya to six boundary ke andar hai to four where is the creativity where is the extemporaneous where is the spontaneous actions so psychologically also this are the best games i would say and i have tried this uh, uh, traditional games uh, the satya patya and kho kho which are and this tapu also which is my favorite also because it, it is played barefoot when you play barefoot you you have that grounded earthing in you you know the hyperactive hyper adhd we say the uh, child adhd hy- hyperactive attention deficit so being in nature and uh, be in connection with the earth they feel more grounded more focused more attentive and also this is a general general knowledge that mother has also said being in the direct sunlight for one an hour only one an hour in direct sunlight may eradicate 99% of your mental and physical disorders on physical education book mother has stated that and playing in sunlight and with a uh, touch of mother nature even for us also for adults also can feel if we go in sunlight and you know uh, stay grounded with the mother earth it may you know give major benefits so i have tried this uh, with adhd patients yeah and you were seen uh, uh, some improvements or, or or how did they respond how did they experience it yeah in the beginning it was tough task because adhd child could not sit in a one position like in kho kho we have to you know sit in a position for a while so they are unable to you know stay calm and wait for their turn to rush so uh, gradually they they got that because other players were also there to support them to come out of this abhi shanti rakh tu shanti rakh so jab bacche bachcho ko sikhate hain they learn more fast you know hamare kehne se wo nahi hota hai when we instruct them or suggest them they won't do if we say you 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 take the bat at 45 degree and hit the ball they they will keep is 90 degree because they want to experiment ki if i take 90 degree what will happen they want to explore they want believe what you say they they experiment by themselves and then follow so we have to give them you know time and space to to redesign rewire their minds yeah really uh, there are so many dimensions to your work and we can take each dimension and go into it i mean psychology culture history decolonization yeah. so many things i my favorite is nationalism also yes national spirit so many things so what's next for you i know that sangeeta would probably have another book on those games which could not be included uh, especially the indoor games i mean there is a quite a bit of interest in that as well um you know there are organizations working on that indoor games and designing you know i mean we live in an age of commercialism so you know everything the design of the traditional board Literally. games or um, you know the games with all kinds of you know the wooden board and the gittes and things like that everything has become popular that day that way so what's next for you in terms of writing research or taking the book beyond to you know actual seeing changes on the ground working with other organizations maybe to popularize these games so yeah people started saying me like uh, you are an author now and you have a book now i i firmly uh, tell, tell them that i am not a author and this is not book for reading this is not allowable this is for user 
you know manual for this games so my agenda is to revive these games and not to become a you know next book author and this so i i i would love to you know connect with uh, uh, schools and institution and even uh, you know government to to appeal them to take this book in the syllabus and they must have one this pt period physical education period uh, when they play just only baseball and whatever ball so <laughs> i i would like to you know we have more than more than 50 we have described in detail but another many games 30 40 you can find which which can be played with different age groups so why not we should take so i am going to appeal you know education minister or you know i am coming to oh my first wish was to take this book to mother's feet for you know blessing taking like since it's is very pleasant that directly from there you are talking to me so it's so nice if mother's blessings are there this book is going to be in school soon yeah right right actually as she said uh, this book is not like uh, like uh, an author uh, i have written other earlier books so i'm accused of being an author but uh, this game this book is not really a book uh, being an author it's like a, we just wanting to make sure that there's something is available for the students so it's like a sports we are just big we are just sports people in this uh, book we are not really authors in this book we just organize the ideas that's all so but uh yeah. oh, she's talking to someone but sangeeta with all the knowledge and the collection and the indoor games so there is a here's an idea for you sangeeta there is a lot of games development company like 3d games on computer they can hire you for 2 crores a year for you to give them ideas on how to create these games Okay. And are you are you saying to actually make coco a virtual game or gimme <laughs> danda a virtual coco game then the indoor, whole point indoor. is lost right indoor indoor games ki baat kar rahe the acha acha uh, uh, okay. indoor okay. see indoor games can actually be ported much conveniently on a uh, uh, i know people play fifa and all that also but uh, there is no physical activity but it's something that does not require physical activity at all and it's playing with like two people usually indoor games are only two people or three people there is there is no running around etc so they get this lot large number of these indian games can actually be picked up by the games company and they can create games and go to market like let this sell games so that's not our objective at all our objective continues to be the the whole foundation has been a cultural renaissance of our country and the large number of other things that we are doing her separately me separately and also together is connected with that so we will our, our objective is to actually to see that these uh, these games get uh, accepted uh, and we can see happy children playing in the neighborhoods making noises uh, like we used to before so that's our objective uh, uh, i think if that that's where the efforts are going to be sounds so fun in fact i was about to ask this question that you know nowadays kids are completely engrossed with video games and uh, i i have two nephews here <laughs> so we are always for uh, always with the games you know that that makes them most of the games they just sleep and uh, just like they just they just lie down and play games you know their bodies are not uh, not active when they are in a state where they, their bodies have to be very uh, flexible and also they 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 they're kind of disconnected from other people and what i also observe is most of these games are like you know winning it's about winning and it's about killing people it's about shooting things so you know uh, what do you feel is the way to uh, bring the, bring these kids out of this kind of games and like how do we inspire them with the games and the, and the kind of things that we were discussing in last uh, uh, one hour so yeah uh the thing is that uh, it's becoming harder and harder to take the kids away from uh, the devices you know the punishment mm-hmm. and reward punishment strategies are typically employed by their parents are not working and uh, the one of the reasons is that kids have nothing better to do so it's the other way around kids don't have anything better to do there's no neighborhood there's no neighborhood dynamics that used to exist and uh, so therefore everybody's at home and uh, this is also a cultural change where we becoming a nuclear family and then there's just one kid or two kids in the house and the neighbors are also busy and there's so much of so called made up pressure of academics as if you know we have like 
three, four Nobel laureates. We, we get none. But despite the pressure is so high on every grade and uh, so-called IITs also, you barely get to do something. Just a few people do well, but otherwise, so, I mean, I, that's a separate topic, but I, that turns me off actually. So we have taken, we are robbing our kids of their childhood. And uh, this is a response. The video games is a, uh, re rebellions against that pressure and they, they take relief in this quick relief you play these video games because if they go out and play the parents themselves will shout you've been playing you'll have to study etc so so that is the parents part of it mm -hmm. and but the second thing is that the, the kids are doing this i think and like i said this cannot be any more fun than the playing with kids outside exactly. cannot be it has to be more fun with kids running around, throwing things, look at the adrenaline, look at all the possibility of the chemistry you can set foot attached to the games being played and the leadership. Every possible thing that we have listed is all happening there. Nothing much is happening here. So even kids would prefer playing those games. But the whole ecosystem of the, this playing those games in the neighborhood has gone. A uh, lot of that is because of the societal hierarchy of class that I'm too good to be play these Indian games and that is what it is. So we have to break that thing. We have to make India stuff cool. We have to make India cool in every aspect. Eating with hand has to be made cool. Playing Indian games has to be made cool. Eating rice and sambar has to be made cool. And therefore playing atyapate has to be made cool. So such things when you convert all that into a cultural confidence that you know, we, this is okay to be uh, yeah. what we are. And the Indian games will naturally pick up. And I hope that uh, once that seed is sown, like what we try to do is sow seed, that okay, you have something to stand on. Now you go ahead and grow. So that's what I was saying earlier. Uh, the book promotion is the term used from the publisher perspective. But for our perspective is to promote the games themselves. And this kid, this became a, the, as a, like a, something that you can, instead of having to go to give lectures, we thought we have something put together. So it is a multi-pronged thing that we have to work on. It's a big project actually for us. It's, really, it's quite challenging too. Uh, as Ram said, this video games and, you know, whatever stuff, this PUBG and this and that, they all, you know, inculcate the idea of uh, winning and killing and competitiveness and, you know, aggressiveness, all, all these negative emotions for, you know, the, such a tender soul. You know, when you hear the lectures of Shraddhaluji, he says, when the child is growing, he is still in a new form. You have to give them, uh, you know, such environment that divine it is inculcating them like love and you know uh, courage and you know uh, peace and what all those positive terms should be there. This video games, of uh, what do they teach? This killing and fighting and always, you know, always in that uh, you know uh, eagerness to win. And if they don't win, they be in. You know, irritated mood and anxious, and they they bounce back all to their parents or their friends. I won't I won't eat today. My PUBG level has not gotten what I wanted. So th this this um, video games and digital stuffs are you know torturing their tender minds. This is very very scary for me. You know, when when we have to teach them like very pleasant atmosphere, peaceful and you know, uh, divine extra qualities, they teach nothing except this, uh, you know, this uh, anxiousness. So I have, I have seen this with my, my nephews also always, you know, with the mobile game. And if we call them to talk to someone, some guest, they could not, they could not associate the parents, uh, friends or relatives or even, even their peers also, they, they can't take, you know, teasing, or, you know, someone told me that you are a little bit of a depression in the house. You have to learn that also, you know, taking, taking your, uh, uh, listening some, uh, some of your lackings, some of your qualities. Where do they, they get? They fight alone, they win alone, they face the anxiety alone, they face the irritation, whatever pressure they have to face alone in their rooms. And same, same gadget or same games. I see. I have seen many children play uh, PUBG games for years. No progress, no development, nothing. They, no varieties. How they do stick to those particular one game? You know, this is addiction. They can't just leave it. You know, 
and i can see the, that in their eyes and their talks and they have become socially inept you no know, they can't go to some parties or speak confidently or they may have knowledge of ip addresses and this game and that game downloading and front loading all that <laughs> but they can't they can't go to a shop and bring the, some 2 kgs of aloo for the, his mother's health where is the life going no practical knowledge is remaining in this go- games so they have to be you know on the spot knowledge spontaneous decision and uh, you know practical theme of the life the skill skill of the life lessons of the lines morals should be there so uh, these our traditional games i, I any time i would uh, you know i advocate for all the schools uh, majorly for 6 to 15 after 15 you may get coaching and training after years they they can grasp those teaching and instruction and all but for 6 to 15 years they have to be in their mindset and explore their self wow really wonderful i think uh, i in the interest of time like i said there are so many other things we can explore and go into but maybe we'll then um, sangeeta you will come but amitabh ji you should also please come along yeah, and we uh, are together we will come up with, so yeah. come any time we'll, we'll yeah. see no no uh, we'll come together she she will yes. she'll fly to bangalore from ahmedabad then we'll drive down that's a plan yes sure. yes we'll yeah. uh, uh, see how with the local schools certain some things can be actually done in practice so that would be you know going with the objectives that you have from the book not necessarily to promote it as a book but the idea of what i what you said the revival the you know the as part of the indian cultural renaissance bringing these games back into uh, people's consciousness and making them cool to make indian games cool i think that is the uh, the motto yeah of all this conversation so yes let's make everything indian cool so that our youth are attracted to it and they want to adopt it and i think uh, with that i would really like to thank you for spending it's been more than an hour we have been talking and uh, it's been really a delight really a delightful conversation so thank you so much for taking out the time and uh, sharing a little bit about your book uh, we will give the link to the you know book um in our write up as well so i really encourage our viewers to get a copy and go through it i also like the subtitle of the indian sports simplified so that's really yes. really simplified them and made it very accessible very reader friendly all the best for your book and all the other future projects that you're working on thank you so much thank, thank you so much thank you so much for having us here thank you belu ji thank you ram <laughs>